Hi, everybody. My name is Leah Gropo. I'm one of our clinical dietitians. Um, and today I have the amazing opportunity to introduce you all to Gina. So Gina Milano is a registered dietitian nutritionist who has been a part of the Stanford Healthcare family for two years. Gina currently works in the bariatric surgery and medical weight loss clinic, where she counsels her patients on the bariatric surgery process, weight management, and helps patients reach their wellness goals through developing sustainable lifestyle habits. Gina has also spent time working with the Stanford Diabetes Care Team, and you can occasionally find her teaching diabetes nutrition education classes. As an avid sports fan and ex-collegiate athlete, Gina feels daily movement is one of the key components to living a healthy and balanced lifestyle. Today, Gina will be sharing a quick and fun exercise routine that can be done at home, work, or even while on vacation. So without further ado, we have Gina. Um, thank you so much for being with us. Just one quick thing. Um, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A. We're actually gonna take questions at the end of the session. Um, so just as a heads up, if you don't hear your question answered. All right, thanks for that great introduction, Leah. I'm so excited to be here with all of you. And as Leah said, I am a part of the Stanford Healthcare family. Um, and as a dietitian, of course, I love to talk about food and how we can get you to build healthier plates and reach your goals. However, I believe that exercise and movement is a key part of the health equation. So while we talk about food a lot and you might think that's what a dietitian specializes in, we do, but we also want you to get moving. And I I know movement can be really challenging. You're busy with work, kids, life, maybe you're commuting, maybe the pandemic has been really um, slow and tough for you as far, as far as movement goes. So I'm gonna walk you through a quick way that you can kind of get some exercise in. Now I'm gonna go through a warm up. So we wanna kind of get those muscles nice and ready to work out. And then we're gonna go through three circuits and these circuits can be done individually or you can pair them all together. It all just comes down to what you have time for, but we always can fit in another five, 10 minutes of some kind of movement. As I know, we're all on our phones looking at Instagram or Facebook or, you know, doing something that we could probably give five minutes extra to our health. So we're going to kind of go through a warm up, three different circuits, and then a cool down. And then of course, you know, I have to talk about food. So we're definitely going to go over some post workout fuel and kind of give you some ideas. And just keep in mind, not only is exercise good for our bodies, but a great way to control your blood sugar. So I'm going to go ahead and get my music going here. And then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, we got our music going. And and I do want to say that if you don't have equipment, that's totally fine. You can do everything we're doing body weight today. Or if you have some weights at home, that's totally fine. And if you're looking to kind of work your muscles just a little bit harder, feel free to clench a fist when we're doing any of our movements because that kind of creates some tension, which helps work your muscles just a little bit harder. Also, I'm old school. If you got some cans at home, these make great weights, laundry detergent, whatever you got. We can always get creative. You don't have to make exercise fancy, okay? All right, are we ready? Here we go. So I'm gonna walk you through our warm up first. Really just gonna get the body going. So first way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do jumping jacks. All right, so do this with me as you're able. Now, if you're not a jumping jack person, totally fine if you have knee pain, just walk it out. Modify, modify, modify. What works for one person isn't gonna work for everyone, right? So let's keep going here. I love it. <laughs> I can see everyone's arms waving, which is great. Just get a few more in here. Five, four, three, two, one. Great. Heart is pumping, blood is moving. Excellent. Now, we're going to do a lot of upper body today. So let's get those arms kind of working. Just going to do some arm circles, nice and slow. Now, if this causes any pain for any of you, if you have shoulder injuries, just change that range of motion. Bring it on down here. Totally fine. Whatever works for you, right? Okay, now we're gonna go backwards. 
Now, I love some of these movements too, because you can do this while you're sitting on the couch, while you're at your desk, anywhere. Probably not in the car so much, but <laughs> I'm sure we can figure that one out. All right, third movement we're gonna do, we're gonna warm up those shoulders even a little bit more. We're gonna do the goal post or hangman. So you're just gonna kind of make a little goal post like this. Go down and up, down and up. This could even be maybe a cool little dance move. All right, really warming up that shoulder. Perfect, okay. Now let's warm up those legs, right? And that lower body. So we're gonna warm up with a squat. Now, a squat is a compound movement that we do all the time without even realizing it, right? Getting up and out of bed, up and out of the chair, when you're picking up your kids, so many ways, right? And when you're doing these squats, think about putting all that weight in your heels. And then when you come up, squeezing that booty to activate the glutes, right? All right. A few more here to feel nice and warm. I don't know about all of you, but I am feeling warm. <laughs> and last one, great. Now, before we get going, we're gonna warm up the obliques just a little bit more. So we're just gonna do some oblique bends. If you don't wanna stand, you could definitely kneel. And we're just gonna reach across. And this feels so good after a long day of maybe typing at our desks or being hunched over driving in the car, just gonna kind of reach over. Great, we're warmed up. Check, check, done, you did it, that's over. That was so quick and easy, right? Okay, now on to upper body. Now, don't forget to hydrate while we're going through this. I'm gonna get a little bit of water here. Okay, so for upper body, we're just gonna do four moves and I'm gonna demonstrate them first and then we'll do it together. We'll keep it really short and sweet. That's what we're after here, right? Okay, so first move is going to be an overhead press. Do so you remember kind of when we did those hangmans earlier? We're just gonna kind of redo those muscles again. So an overhead press, perfect. And again, make those fists or feel free to get those weights out. So that's the first move. Our second move is going to be our lateral raises. Kind of think about when we warm this up a little bit. Just gonna go nice and out. Think about making a T. Okay, that's the second move. The third move is going to be bicep curls. Now really squeeze, think about really squeezing those biceps, keeping those elbows in here. Don't want those elbows out like a chicken, right? So really get those biceps in. And then lastly, we're gonna do some rows. This is really great for your posture and for your back. So think about hinging at the hips, engaging your core. And then if you've ever mowed a lawn, kind of like a lawnmower, when you gotta kind of get the lawnmower going, we're just gonna get those lawnmower going on both sides, right? And really squeeze your little angel weights back there, okay? Overhead press, lateral raises, bicep curls, rowers. Let's go. Here we go. And together. Woo, definitely feeling it, right? Sure some of us are starting to get a little sweaty here. I know I am. And three, two, and one. Great. Lateral raises. We're going to do ten here. Let's go. Really squeeze. And three, two, one. You guys are awesome. All right, bicep curls, let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my hands for this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and bicep curl it out, right? Squeeze those biceps. Makes us so strong, picking up those kiddos, those groceries, all the different things we do all day long. Three, two, and one. All right. Now for some of you who have weights, I'm just gonna demo that with our rows here. 
Let's get those long lower strengthens. Okay, here we go. Let's do 10 reps here. Squeeze those finger wings. Engage that core. All the way in the heel. You guys are rock stars. And three, two, one. And just like that, we've done a warm up. We've done upper body. So quick, so fast, so easy. You can do those multiple times through if you want, or if you're short on time, warm it up, do an upper body circuit, good to go. Every kind of movement counts, don't forget that. All right, now let's go into the lower body because we gotta work our strong legs. Now let's think back to those squats that we did earlier. We're gonna do those again. So again, all that weight in your heels, we don't wanna be over our toes and just get our squats. That's gonna be our first one, right? Okay, squats. Then we're gonna get some lunges. We're gonna get those quads activated. Now, if you're not so great with balance or you're a little hesitant, that's okay. Hang on to a desk, a chair, a wall, just like this. And we're gonna alternate lunges. We're gonna lunge out and back, out and back. Now, when you're lunging, Make sure you're not coming too far forward. You don't want that knee to be over those toes. Want it to be just like this. Okay. Excellent. Now we're gonna get those calves working. Our calves do so much for us. Running around with our kids, running up the stairs, and all that stuff. We're gonna do some calf raises. So go ahead and put on those high heels, which are my favorite, and go right up to your tiptoes. And that's gonna be our third movement. Again, if you need to hang on here. Totally fine. Then our last movement, aside from the calf raises, we did our squats and we go ahead and we did our lunges. We're then going to do our donkey kicks. That might sound a little strange, but this really works your glute in a different way. So hands on the floor, nice and flat, just like this. And you're gonna make your foot flat. And we're gonna alternate on both sides. Think about if your shoe is muddy, and you're trying to stamp the top of the ceiling. That's what we're gonna do here. You're gonna move your knee and stamp, and stamp. And really squeeze those peaches when you're doing it, okay? All right, here we go. Let's start out with squats. We're gonna do 10 of those, then switch to our lunges. Here we go. Let's squat it out. Woo! Gotta get nice and warm. I know I am. <laughs> and three, two, and one. Excellent. Let's get to those lunges. We're gonna alternate here. Let's go for 10. And don't be afraid to hang on to things if you need it. Again, modifying, totally fine. Fitness and nutrition is individualized. Don't forget that. Two and one. Excellent. More than halfway done. Now let's get those calves firing up. We're gonna put on our fancy high heels. Let's go. So good, this takes me back to ballet class as a kid, right? Maybe some of you did that in gymnastics way back when. <laughs> And three, two, and one. Awesome. Now let's finish it up with our donkey kicks here, huh? Okay, how are we doing? We doing good? And I didn't say this. At any point, you need to take a break. You need to wipe off your brow. You need to take a sip of water. You do you. 100% okay by me. Okay. Hands on the ground here. And remember, you're just gonna really stamp that feeling with your muddy shoes, your mom would be so mad. My mom would be so mad. <laughs> All right, here we go. 10, nine. So squeeze those peaches. We're working those hamstrings. Three, two, and one. We did it. Warm up, upper body, lower body. Now we're gonna do full 
water. We're gonna put all those together. Take a sip of water here. You know, this is such a great workout. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. So much fun. Okay. Now, we're definitely going to put everything together, right? So think of our upper body combined with our lower body. For you, it's going to be a squat. Okay. Squat. Squat. It's going to be a squat press. Okay. So really putting in that overhead press that we did and the squat, right? So that's the first move. Our second move is going to be our lunge with a lateral raise. Lunge, lateral raise. Again, if you're not feeling comfortable with that, you can always hang on to that chair, lunge, and then go ahead and do it, right? Totally, totally fine. Third move is going to be our fun calf raises with bicep curls. Calf raise, bicep curl. Got it? Okay. Now, fourth move, you can modify it or make it as hard as you want to. I will leave that up to you. I know you all can do it. We're gonna test the limits here and push past those boundaries. So, you can do this with this hand, or if you want your weights here, that's totally fine. You're going to put either your hands flat on the floor, just like you see, and kind of move your knees back a little bit, just so there's some more space here. And this is where we're gonna do our rows, right? You can do it this way, totally fine. If you're wanting to level up, we should say, you can go into a plank and row. Now, this may not be appropriate for everyone, but everyone works with different speed. So make sure you start in the first place and then work up to the second, okay? All right, are we ready? We're doing good, feeling strong. Last circuit, then we warm, we cool down, okay? All right, here we go. I'm gonna get my hands here just to give a little bit more resistance, okay? Squat and press. Here we go. We're doing 10 of these bad boys. And nine, eight, seven. You got this. You're almost there. And three, two, one, done. All right, moving on to our lunges. Gonna start out with our right foot forward for a lateral raise. Here we go. Raise. You can switch the can if you want. That can maybe make it a little bit more challenging for those of us working on balance. Okay. Couple more. We got this. Two and one. Perfect. Okay, finishing up with our calf raises and our bicep curls, okay? Really make sure you're squeezing those calves. Here we go, 10 of these. Woo! You guys. Sometimes I ask myself, why did you make this so difficult? But right, we can always make it easier. No weights. Slow down the time. Take a little bit extra of a break. There's always ways to make it a little bit easier for you and to modify. Three more, here we go. All right, last one. Okay, finishing it up with those rows. And I'm just going to do it from my knees and keep it nice and simple. So go ahead, get your knees back here a little bit, and let's row it out, alternating to each side. Ten here. Here we go. Woo! Here we go. I'm going to need to rehydrate and refuel after this. Here we go. And three, two, one. Oh, you guys, we did it. Woohoo! Now it's time to stretch out that body. We just got done shortening all of our muscles with those weights and closing our fists for resistance. Now we gotta lengthen them out. And that's how you avoid injuries. A great way to recover, right? So we're gonna do something called child's pose. 
So we're gonna always go ahead and put your feet together just like this and go ahead and rest your bottom on your heels and stretch your hands out. Oh, I really sink into this. This feels so good. Woo. Oh. Okay. Now you can stay in these poses for as long as you need. So I'm gonna teach you how to thread the needles. You're just gonna take your right arm and thread it through and lay your shoulder down. That's gonna really help stretch out your back and your core. Great, other side, thread that needle through. This is something we just don't take enough time to do sometimes. All right, and I am guilty of that for sure. I always think, no, I don't need to stretch. It'll be fine. And then I always think the next day, why did I not stretch? That was silly, right? So go ahead and put your legs out. Let's go ahead and reach those fingers out towards your toes, just like this. Okay, and really kind of lean over the best that you can. If you're here, that's okay too. Do your best to kind of get those legs pushed out. Stretch out those hammies, that back. Okay, excellent. Now go ahead and lace your hands together, your fingers. We're gonna push it out and up to the sky. Kind of rotating back and forth. Okay, and clap it up for yourselves. You did great, you made it through. And how easy and simple was that, right? I hope so. <laughs> great, Gina, thank you so much. That was so great. I feel like I'm sweating. Yeah, that's a great workout. And just, just think, we always kind of think that, you know, it should be 45, 60 minutes for a great workout. A great workout doesn't always require that much time. It requires a good attitude, good effort, and your best foot forward, right? That's all we can do. So this was something you can easily just incorporate into your routine as best as you can. Excellent. And Gina, somebody has a question. He said that you mentioned um, exercising being good for blood sugars. Um, they were wondering a little bit more about that. Yeah, that's a great question. So the different levels of exercise can maybe um, be more beneficial than others for your, your blood sugars. But generally speaking, let's say, for example, you had a big pasta dinner with your family, you're feeling super full, you go ahead and you check your blood sugars and you're like, hmm, my blood sugars are pretty high after that dinner. The best thing to do is to go ahead and just intensity walk in, go outside around the block for 15 minutes. That could be a nice little jog. That could be a nice little bike ride whatever you want it to be, and that natural movement, you burning that sugar for energy that helps take your blood sugars from here to here. And you might feel a lot better. And that might also help with digestion after that big pasta meal as well. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. All right, any other questions? I'm gonna share with everyone some post-workout fuel as well, because that's very important that after you exercise, we definitely wanna make sure we're fueling our muscles back up with some protein as well as some carbohydrates. Now, the options that I'll share with you here in just a moment, some of them are different amounts of carbohydrates. Some might be more appropriate for a snack. Some might be more appropriate for a meal. It kind of just depends on what is working best for you and the amount of carbohydrates you need to refuel and maybe depending on your other health and nutrition goals as well. So, I'll share this with all of you in just a second here. Hmm. Well, first, oh, here we go. Perfect. All right. Can everyone see our beautiful photos here? Great. Excellent. So as I was saying, you know, you definitely want to include some kind of protein because after you, you work out, I want to think about two R's, refueling and rehydrating. 
So not only do we got to fill up with some water, maybe, but you also want to make sure that you get that protein in to help those muscles. You just worked really hard refuel. Also, depending on the type of exercise that you've done, maybe you've burned a lot of that carbohydrate that you had at lunch or at breakfast, depending on what your day is like. So here are just some different options. And we always want to think about what works best for your lifestyle, right? So some of us may be on the go and you don't have time to go home, make a meal, whatever it may be. So as an example, you could definitely use something like a protein shake. This is just a lower carb option, a higher protein option. But then I also want you to pair it with a fruit. And fruit is going to be our carbohydrate here. This is definitely maybe a little bit bigger than 15 grams here. Um, it's a pretty big apple. But this would be a great pairing of protein and carbohydrates. A great way to refuel. And remember, you're always wanting to pair your protein source with your carbohydrate to allow for that optimal digestion and to keep those blood sugars nice and stable, right? Okay, so that's our first on the go option. Throw that in the car, the diaper bag, your car, wherever you're going, you need a little bit something to go, right? Now, I just have some other options here on the screen. So you could easily pack a yogurt parfait. Maybe you want to do a container of low sugar Greek yogurt and kind of a fun little rule for yogurt that can help you um, pick a good option when you're at the grocery store is I always want you to think protein in the double digits and sugars in the single digits. So if you're looking at the back of a nutrition facts label and you see that the added sugars are 12 or 15, that's where I want you to think and say, hmm. I know I can make a more balanced choice. So you're gonna look for an option that has the added sugars that are less than 10. Just to name a few, there's a brand called Too Good. There's a brand called Low Sugar Chobani. You can also do an Oikos option. I have a couple here that I'll show you. If we have any Trader Joe's shoppers, this one is the Icelandic one. And this has 16 grams of protein, and only five grams of added sugar. So that's something you want to look for. Now you could just pop one of these guys into a little cooler or your lunch bag, put a cup of berries on top for some extra fiber and a more source of your carbohydrates with your yogurt. And then maybe give it a little bit of nuts on top to give you that healthy fat and that crunch that maybe you're looking for. Okay. And other two options here, avocado toast, one of my favorite options, you can do a slice of a whole grain bread. If you're trying to be more conscious of your carbohydrates and still get your bread in, one of my favorite brands is the Dave's Killer Bread, the thin sliced, and that's about 13 grams per slice. So if you're kind of trying to be a little more conscious, that's a great choice to do. Put a little bit of avocado top and then your protein with those eggs, as you can see in our pretty picture here. And then last but not least, maybe you're ready for a bigger meal after you exercise and you're going to go for a turkey sandwich and maybe some fruit on the side. So again, I have that Dave's Killer Bread. You can do two slices of that, bunch of lean turkey to get your protein in. Of course, I always want you to pack it with veggies for that extra fiber and then fill it up on the side with some fruit. So again, this may not work for everyone, but these are different options you can try. If you're looking for post-workout fuel options that are maybe lower in carb or more balanced, that's what Leah is here, Jessica, Elaine, you know, Andrea, myself, anyone that you've worked with, um, we're all here to support you and give you those ideas. All right, any other questions? Um, I, let me look really quick. Um, I think that we're just getting um, notes in the Q&A that people are really enjoying your workout and also your snack ideas. I don't know. Um, does anyone have any questions? I guess type them in now before um, we close out. We can wait just a quick moment and see. Um, but I, I love all of your snack ideas, Jean. I think they're great. Um, oh, somebody is asking, is fruit sugar okay to eat? That's a great question. And that's definitely something we want to think about. So fruit, kind of like our apple here, fruit is a carbohydrate. So whether you're having an apple or a piece of toast or some rice, your body knows all three of those as the same, that they're all going to be broken down into sugar. But fruit is, can be a good option if you're choosing a higher fiber option, because the more fiber that's there, that's going to take a little bit longer for your body to digest. 
So if choosing something like an apple or some strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, those are going to stay with you a little bit longer, keep you fuller and help things be a little bit more balanced. So I would much rather you add some fresh fruit on top of your yogurt rather than buying a yogurt that has fruit already in it. And that also is probably packing it with a little bit more of added sugar. So this kind of gives you a little bit more bang for your buck. So I would definitely say to answer that, yes. <laughs> Great, thanks, Tina. One more question. Um, why did you choose turkey over chicken in your sandwich example? Oh, that's a good question. I think I'm just a turkey girl. I don't know. They're both great sources of lean protein. So if you wanted to do chicken or you wanted to do maybe um, like some low sodium smoked salmon or some canned tuna, you definitely could go that route. There's no rhyme or reason. I think I just like a good turkey sandwich. So as long as you're getting a lean protein source, that's most important. Great question. Yeah, excellent. These are great questions. Um, I think that that's it for the questions now. Um, if anyone has any last questions, definitely feel free to put it in the Q&A. Um, I have it up, so I will see it immediately. Um, but if not, I mean, Gina, this was um, fabulous. I feel like we've all gotten our um, blood pumping and our uh, workout in before 6 p.m. This is amazing. Um, we can all go back and rewatch Gina's workout um, and do them because we're going to post this on the Stanford Healthcare um, YouTube channel. So it will be through the health library. So we'll have that as well. Yeah, thank you so much for everyone for having and coming today. I hope you all do the workouts at home and find ways to incorporate those, you know, whether it's at the office, in your room for just 10 minutes, or even when you're out on vacation. Um, I feel like this makes getting active super easy and super fun. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for coming. Bye everyone. Bye.